for good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, and also St. Francis Feast Day. Um, today we'll be uh, sharing in our usual way, and so please put your prayers into the chat box. Please be sure you're muted as we begin the service, and thank you so much for joining us, and here we go. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and you to his people on earth. Lord God, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. you and also with you let us pray almighty and everlasting god you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve pour upon us the abundance of your mercy for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
a reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witness the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tales to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into the, all, the, all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun, it comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice, rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. Uh -oh. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can tell how often he, off, uh, he offends? Cleanse me from secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be accept acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the support Sur, uh, surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. 
For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God be based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of resurrection and his, and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in, in his death. If somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straightening forward to, to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he'll put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at their harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing and it is amazing in our eyes Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Greetings, Episcopal Church in Colorado. Before I begin my sermon, I wanted to hold up our president and our first lady in our prayers, uh, realizing that I just received the news a little while ago. Pray for the physicians who are attending to them and all those who are taking care of them. I pray that they are restored to health and wholeness. I also pray for all those people and ask your prayers for all those people, millions of people across the world who have been affected with COVID especially for those who have died as a result of COVID. Please hold them in your prayers at this time. My sermon today is on the third chapter of Philippians, as well as Matthew 21, verses 33 through 46. But I want to begin in Philippians. Uh, in this particular part in the third chapter of Philippians, Paul begins with his holy resume. He begins to say just how holy he is. But it's to make a point. He is not bragging. He's saying, doesn't matter how holy I think I am, how holy you think you are, how holy you think the other person is. The reality is that no matter how holy we are, we need to be transformed. We need to be transformed. That doesn't mean that we are just simply change. We are transformed. It doesn't mean it's about self-help or slight becoming a slightly better person, but that deep transformation. And he uses words that perhaps may not be as comfortable as, as, as Episcopalians or perhaps comfortable to a lot of people. The idea of gain and loss. Now, hopefully you are on board with the gain part. The gain is all the riches that Christ bestows upon us, his grace, his love, and that is a good and unimaginable thing. And he wants to hold that up, but he also wants you to realize as a follower of Jesus that you have to give up something. And I wonder, in our prayer lives, do we ask enough, what have I given up to be a follower of Jesus? And also to continue to ask, what do I need to let go of to be a better follower of Jesus? A constant question because it's not a one and done. There are times where we need to constantly ask ourselves, what do we need to let go of to be a better follower of Jesus? It's different for every person. We have to decide within ourselves, what is that that Paul calls rubbish? Now, that's kind of a British term, a little bit too precious to me. I prefer the term trash or garbage. What do I need to let go of to be a better follower of Jesus? He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death. We are sometimes all about resurrection, but we don't really like to talk about death. What do we need to let go of? What do we need to let die in order to fully live into the resurrection? He loved, I love this term. He says, I need to press on towards the goal, the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus, to press on. Our journey in faith means there are times when we have to press on, and sometimes we feel that pressure more than others. We press on towards our heavenly call. Again, not just to be God, peace, God's good people, but to be God's people, to be faithful followers of Jesus. We have to constantly keep moving in our own faith journey. And our faith journey formally starts, at least in the, in the baptismal covenant for a lot of us, at least. And perhaps we don't spend enough time reflecting on that besides just the times where we were new it throughout the years or remembering back to our own baptism. Uh, if you work in the office of the bishop, you hear it a lot because our bishop, rightfully so, likes to talk about the baptismal covenant almost any chance that she gets. And uh, her and I both like the baptismal covenant in many ways. What I like about it is the questions we are asked. One question in particular I think that 
I constantly return to is, will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Not if you will fall into sin, but when you fall into sin. That is a reminder, at least to me, that I know that I am far from perfect and that I need to constantly press on. And again, if I needed a reminder of my imperfection and my faith journey, the reminder at every question, at least the answer is I will with God's help. I will with God. God's help. And Paul kind of alludes to that, actually very explicitly alludes to that in Philippians. In fact, that we don't do this by ourselves. We do this with God, and not only with God, but with each other. In the baptism covenant, baptismal covenant, we are called to be in community with one another. It is that formal entry into this community known as the body of Christ, which brings us, at least in my mind, to Matthew 21, 33 through 46. In this, we get the words of Jesus, and Jesus talks about this parable about the vineyard and the tenants and who are doing it, and some are good and some are bad and wicked. And he said, I'm going to work with the people who I know will work with me. And then he also talks about a cornerstone, the idea of him being the chief cornerstone. It's an allusion to Psalm 118. And I think it's important to put a couple things in context about this. First of all, I'm, I'm well aware it's October and we're thinking about Halloween and maybe uh, if we're really kind of holy, we're thinking about All Saints Day and other stuff like that. But the reality of in this particular lesson in Matthew, is in Holy Week. You see, Jesus has entered into Jerusalem and he is talking to religious leaders. He's underneath the shadow of the cross. It is looming not too far ahead of him. And also, it's important to note that I think in the Gospel of Matthew, that the time it was written, the temple had been destroyed. To a primarily Jewish audience, it was intended for the Gospel of Matthew is written after the destruction of the temple. So they're trying to look back at the words of Jesus and see how it makes sense in light of their destruction of the temple, in light of everything they knew had been destroyed. Their worship life had changed almost instantaneously. I think we can kind of relate to that. In a sense, COVID has destroyed our temple in many ways. We had to change and do and be things differently. We've all done it in a variety of different ways, but we all had to change. We all had to do and to be something different. So maybe we can relate a little bit more to what's going on here with Jesus and hearing like we heard in the Gospel of Matthew, hearing it like they heard, hearing it knowing that everything, and perhaps we can look back at these words of Jesus and say, how does it apply to us today? How are we tending God's vineyard? Are we like the religious leaders in the sense of wanting to hold on to a system that was comfortable to them, what they knew? what made them feel powerful, what made them falsely feel closer to God? Or are we willing to let go? Because Jesus is calling for something different. Hopefully we are doing a lot of reflecting on what we need to let go. What is rubbish? What is trash? What is garbage? What do we as a church need to let go of? Because in every day and every age, there has been things that we have need to let go of, things we have wanted to hold on to so tightly. And Jesus is calling us to let go of. One of my favorite cartoons has Jesus on the outside of a church, uh, right at the door. And on the other side of the door, you can see inside the church, there's at least 10 or 12 people kind of standing against the door, pressing and get against it, and at the bottom, the caption says, don't let him in. 
everything will change. It will change everything. Now, I like that cartoon, thinks it's very funny, but I've recently done some reflection on it. And one of the reasons I don't like it is because, in a sense, there should be no door. Yes, we should let Jesus into our church, but we should also be willing to go out and meet Jesus outside as well. Because if we haven't discovered it by now, I hope we need to, that God is not just in the church building. God is in our homes. God is in the neighborhoods. God is everywhere. And we need to go out there and see where God is. COVID has exposed the cracks in our society where we have seen where God is at work and is calling us to at work. And we need to leave behind all that rubbish that sometimes gets in the way of that and live more fully into being more faithful followers of Jesus, which means getting outside, going to places, not just in Jerusalem, but in all the highways and the byways that God is calling us to. Each of us, as a church and as individuals, is going to have to decide what our rubbish is, what our trash is, what our garbage is. I know as a part of my own personal life, I am constantly praying that I can be a part of a church that helps people become better followers of Jesus. That I don't get in the trappings of the institution and want to hold on to things that make me feel powerful, that make me feel more in control, make me falsely feel connected to God. I pray that I can be a part of a church that is not just about making pledging units or maintaining buildings or perpetuating an institution. Rather, I want to be a part of a church that is about faithfully following Jesus, that is willing to let go of whatever gets in the way of being more faithful stewards of the vineyard. I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection and the sharings of his sufferings by becoming more like him in his death. That's a tough prayer to pray. Nevertheless, I think it's a prayer that we are called to pray today, to realize that God is up to something. Let's let go of the rubbish. Yes. Everything that needs to change will change if we let God. The cornerstone. The cornerstone is stronger than we could ever imagine. Let's begin to rebuild. Amen. I believe in Almighty God, who guided the people in exile and in exodus, the God of Joseph in Egypt and Daniel in Babylon, the God of foreigners and immigrants. I believe in Jesus Christ, a displaced Galilean, who was born away from his people and his home, who fled his country with his parents when his life was in danger and, and returning, returning to his own country, suffered the oppression of the tyrant Pontius Pilate, the servant of a foreign power, who then was persecuted, beaten, and finally tortured, accused and condemned, condemned to death unjustly. But on the third day, this scorned Jesus rose from the dead, not as a foreigner, but to offer us citizenship in heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the eternal immigrant from God's kingdom among us, who speaks all languages, lives in all countries, 
and reunites all races. I believe that the church is the secure home for the foreigner and for all believers who constitute it, who speak the same language and have the same purpose. I believe that the communion of the saints begins when we accept the diversity of the saints. I believe in the forgiveness of sin, which makes us all equal, and in reconciliation, which identifies us more than does race, language, or nationality. I believe that in the resurrection, God will unite us as one people in which all are distinct and all are alike at the same time. Beyond this world, I believe in life eternal in which no one will be an immigrant, but all will be citizens of God's kingdom, which will never end. Amen. The prayers of the people. Please add any prayers you have in the chat box. O God of life in all its abundance, hear the intercessions of your people and mercifully consider the prayers offered from our hearts. Tend this vine, a faithful remnant, and preserve in love what you have planted. Renew our lives in you, O God. Faithful one, you are continually calling us to return to the living fully. Keep your word alive in our hearts, that we not reject the cornerstone of life. Grant us a deep awareness that grounds us in the truth as we share our lives with one another. Renew our lives in you, O God. Faithful one, what have we done with your precious vineyard? You have left it for us to tend, and we've neglected your gift. Seeking the welfare of the world and all therein, stir us to honor and preserve what you have created. Renew our lives in you, O God. Faithful one, that we may always produce the fruits of the kingdom, create in us the desire to go deeper into the richness of your silence where we may linger in your peace. Grounded, may we then offer that support to the crushed and the broken. Renew, Renew our, our lives, lives in you, O oh God. Faithful one, Within each of, of us, you have planted the joys and the gifts of life for the f nurturing of your peoples. Awaken in us the path of our discovery. As Christ Jesus made us his own, may we give our own in love to the world. O oh God. Renew our lives in you, O oh God. You, O oh God, faithful one, Encourage and empower your diverse and faithful laborers of the harvest, especially the work of those in the Anglican Church in Tanzania. Unite the hands and work with those who tend the vine at Chapel of Our Savior in Colorado Springs, St. Paul Church in Central City, and St. Stephen's Church in Longmont. Click. Renew our, our lives, lives in you, O oh God. We offer prayers for healing for Kelly. Prayers for peace for Nicholas. Pray for President Trump, regardless of what we think of his performance in office. Prayers for Carol, Christine, Ron, and Jackie. Birthday prayers for Nora, Nona, and prayers of safety for Connor. Blessings and healings for Sam, Linda, Dolores, and guidance for Anna and Mick. As school starts with in-person school, pray for the well-being of the teachers, staff, and students. Prayers for Jackie and Ron. Prayers for jobs for Justin and Josh. Prayers for healing for Sherry. Pray for the repose of the soul for Evelyn. Healing for my sister Melanie, brother-in-law Robert, and niece Emily, who all tested positive for C, coronavirus. 
prayers for Philip and B and baby Maxine. Prayers for Ellie. Prayers for Eleanor as she and other students start in-person classes tomorrow. Healing, healing for Dina and Lexi. Healing for Dolly. For migrants in our world, that they may be strengthened on their journey by our prayer and concrete actions. Faithful one, Remind us in each moment of the foundation of love that will never crumble beneath us. Comfort and heal the hurting of this world and entrust compassion within us to care and compassion for those in need. Renew, Renew our lives in you, O oh God. Faithful one, least we forget the way, press upon us a call to live well nourished branches of the vine now and forever. Grant rest and peace to all the departed, even as we journey forth together in love. Renew, Renew our, our lives, lives, O God, as, as you, you have, have promised. promised. Amen. Almighty God, by whose grace all worldly leaders exercise power, Help politicians and voters move through this election season with respect and dignity. Bless all who are vying for political office with clarity and transparency in their campaigns. And give voters openness and diligence in casting their ballots. Help us keep perspective that we may be firm in our convictions kind and respectful to those who vote differently and ever mindful that how we treat others is how we treat you. This we ask of the one who is Lord over every election, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. you. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. It's good to see you all. Peace. Happy birthday, Will. Thank you, Rhoda. <laughs> That's where Gray is right now, helping him at home. <laughs> well, good. Wonderful. I'm glad there's companionship there. <laughs> Peace. Peace. We are grateful to you for all the joys and the blessings of this life. Everything we have and everything we are comes from you. Help us give back for the furtherance of your kingdom out of the generosity that springs from your love and gratitude. All, all things come from you, you, O Lord. Lord. And of your, your own, own have we
life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So let us be swift to love and make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God who made us, who loves us, and who travels with us be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hi everybody again. The flowers today were arranged by Ah Young and they're gorgeous in person and on the screen here. And they're given by Terry Birdsong in gratitude and in memory of her parents. Welcome anybody who's worshiping with us for the first time today. Um, we, our pastor Felicia is on vacation, but she is more than happy to spend time with you um, in conversation about everything St. Paul's. And you can also visit our website at www.stpauls-fc.org for more information. And the St. Paul's website is always being updated and improved. And we have two new pages for you to visit. The first is a blog post by Kay Williams. And what you do is you go up to the, um, to the screen where it says who we are and hover over that button there with your cursor. And then you'll see staff reflections in the drop down menu. And you can get the blog there. The racial justice work page is also new. And it's also, um, let's see, where did I put that? Let me say here. Uh, yeah, again, who we are, I thought so. It's also under the who we are button. And uh, you scroll down in the drop down menu and you'll find race, racial justice work. And you can find there the resources that we've been mentioning in the epistle and also um, schedules and other information for our racial justice group. And let's keep talking about communion next Sunday, 1030 to 1130 on Zoom. And we'll use the same link as the worship service link, which is the one you're on right now. 
uh, to do that. Last week we had a wonderful discussion. And one of the things that really deeply moved me in the discussion was the awareness that a lot of us carry that as we engage in the ritual of communion, we are connected across time and space with all the other people uh, present and long gone and yet to come even who are also celebrating communion with us. So it's a cloud of witnesses that hovers around us when we do this. So here are the questions that we'll consider a week from Sunday and they'll be, they have been in the epistle and they'll be in the epistle again next week. Is communion important to you? What is your most powerful memory of a time you participated in the Eucharist? What does a, an experience of table fellowship need to include in order to be Eucharist for you? And then is the Eucharist an essential part of worship? What else is meaningful in worship? And what's not meaningful? Please send me your photos. We are going to be doing a um, music and visual slideshow of the people who have been important in your lives, who've guided you in one way or another. Um, if you can find something, maybe you have an old photo uh, and you're wondering how in the heck do I send that? Well, just take a picture of it with your camera and then send me the picture. <coughs> and I'm happy to, um, you know, crop it and do things like that if necessary. But please get them to me by um, Friday, October 16th, so that we can make ourselves a really nice slideshow. I think I'm going to include some of the saints that are part of our congregation, if I can find photos like Lou Weber and Addie, of course. And, uh, but yeah, if you, if you find photos of them as well, please send them. <coughs> Cathedral Ridge is offering uh, individual retreat time during this COVID time. Uh, give them a call or visit them online to learn more about what that's like. They've got cottages and also lodge rooms that um, are available for, for individual retreats. Here's a little information from um, the Episcopal News Service, how to plan to vote, help people to register to vote, <coughs> uh, spread the word. <coughs> It's, you know, as we know, it's a really important year for the vote. So please put it on your list of things to talk about with your friends and relations. We're also looking for talent during Advent and Christmas. Um, kids and, and youth who can share special music during the pageant service. It's always been a highlight of our, um, of our time together. Um, and in order for us to put together usable uh, videos, <laughs> submit recordings by November 1st. St. Paul's Racial Justice Group will be meeting on October 8th and join us as we learn about racism and how we can become allies to people who are Black, Indigenous, and people of color. Sunday school is gonna start right after we get done pretty much. Um, Jackie was asking that you bring 11 popsicle sticks and masking tape and markers. I would imagine that if you don't have the popsicle sticks on hand that there will be another alternative. And finally the three church, we talked about this at the beginning of um, our service, but here it is again. Uh, three church, Faith Partners, Food Drive, um, is today, and it will be from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. St. Paul's is responsible for helping out from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., and then um, Mary of Magdala from 1 to 3, and Trinity from 3 to 5. So bring your donations there, and there's a list, peanut butter, whole grain pasta, etc. cetera, uh, no glass containers, um, and then, if you would like your animals to be blessed in person, Pastor Jane and Deacon Roseanne will do that between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. If you need help in this time when financial uh, 
hardships abound, please give us a call. Contact Pastor Felicia at rector at st. paul's-fc.org and um, arrange to have a conversation with her. And then worship and conversation opportunities in the coming week. Um, of the weekly Tuesday morning prayer at 8 a.m., um, which is a Zoom service. And the link uh, is in the epistle and also on the website. There's a weekly, Tuesday, a weekly Wednesday noon service for prayer and conversation yes. and the time just to share what's on your heart. And then weekly Wednesday evening worship in the gardens. And the time has changed from 5.30 to 5 p.m. And Bill Holtzel will be hosting uh, this week. This week is also our diocesan convention. Um, and both Thursday evening worship and the Friday evening um, keynote speech are available to everybody. And so if you'd like to participate in those, and it, it gives you a wonderful opportunity, the worship service does, to kind of be with the entire diocese in worship and to hear a great message from the bishop. And then Friday, the Right Reverend Robert Wright, who's Bishop of Atlanta, will offer a keynote speech, and then he and the bishop of our diocese will have a conversation after that. All of this will be available on the diocesan YouTube channel, and that link, I'll send it out um, probably tomorrow so that you have it. And then I want to um, offer a blessing of the animals here remotely. Um, and so I think probably the best way to do it would be, let's see, see what the chat box is looking like here. Yeah, so if you would, either just call out your pet's names or put them in the chat box there, then um, we will offer a prayer. And some of them are on screen. No Williams dog. Um, and then let's see, I'll find my prayer. Look there, see, look there. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Beloved, thank you so much for the animals who are in our lives. And thank you for all the animals of the world. Bless the creatures who have been faithful to us as they bless us with their presence and their love. Through their love, we learn your love for us. And through the presence of all the creatures of the world, we understand your blessing to us of abundance and <laughs> life and connection. Remember in particular, Harley, Maggie. Let's see, I better start at the top. Rocky, Pip, Nellie, Toby, and Peyton, Lincoln, and Milo. Daisy, Ranger, and Enzo, Charlie, Maggie, Rupert, and Archie, Smelly Cat, Flocka Maka, Greeny Pig, Greeny, Greeny Pie, sorry, Greeny Pie 2, Dart, and Mellow, Hazel, and call out your own pet's names. Friday. Oliver. Ellie. George and Lizzie. Buck. <laughs> Beloved, be with them as they go. Grant them health, long life, and the abundance of love that you grant for us as well. Amen. And who has special prayers? Birthdays or anniversaries or... Sue does. All right. What What is it, Sue? This it will be my first birthday on the 8th. So when you get a transplant, the day of your transplant is considered your new birthday. So I'll be one years old on the 8th. 
today. <laughs> Great, Sue. Thanks. Other folks? Julia. Yeah, Julia is 13 today. She doesn't want to come oh. on camera. All right. And Ian's going to be nine funny. this week. And Hi, Will's Ian. birthday? Will, that's right. Geez, I better start writing these down. We've got three. Can I remember them all? Demetrius wants you. Demetrius? Demetrius? Yeah. Your birthday, too? All right, for sure. I need a pen. <laughs> yeah, my birthday was on the first. All right. Yeah. So, Demetrius. I can't Ian. believe Ian is going to be nine. Yeah. Megan? Julia. Oh, no, Julia. Julia. Julia is oh. 13 today. Julia, wow, 13. Can you even believe it? I thought it was Megan because it's so old. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like they were baby girls. Uh, Megan's probably about to leap off into college at that point. Yeah, yeah. she's ready. Yeah, she's working on it. Wow. Okay, so Demetrius. Ian, Julia, and who was the fourth one? Sue. Sue. Sue, of course. Well, no, Sue was the fifth one, right? Wasn't there another besides? Will. Will, thank you. Okay, so extend your hands in blessing for our fellow St. Paul's people. Beloved. Thank you so much for these people who grace our lives and you feed us with the knowledge and particular nature of who they are. Bless Will, Demetrius, Ian, Julia, and bless Sue on this very first new birthday that she has. Thank you so much for everything that they give us. Be with them as they try as they go. Grant them grace and health and abundance in this year ahead. And may they always walk closer and closer in you. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Ian. Have Happy a great birthday, birthday this week. Happy birthday, Sue. Happy birthday. And happy birthday, Demetrius. Hold on, can I just say the prayer? What's that? Oh, no, okay. Okay, all righty. Well, now it's time to, to go into breakout rooms. And so um, <clears throat> if, if you'd like to join with us, just hang out for a minute. If you're gonna go on, have a wonderful week and we'll see you all next week. Thank you, Lori. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.